everyone and welcome to the Chrissy B Show. Now, what do we have in store for you today? Well, we're going to be speaking a bit about how to deal with teenagers because many people have, parents especially, have a few difficulties dealing with their teens. They don't really understand them. They don't know how to relate to them. So there'll be lots of advice from Dave Lee and Gordon Jessamine from the Infinity Foundation. And also we're going to be having Donald Gale, who's a counsellor on as well, so a social worker as well, and he's going to be also giving his input. And we also have a lovely young lady called Maria Jose Hayo, who's going to be singing for us. She's actually a songwriter as well, to, see, to show the other side of teens, because they can be brilliant as well if they're given the right guidance. And we also have our self-development clinic with Chris Brown later on too. But first of all, as always, we have the news with the lovely Rihanna this time. Hello, Rihanna. Hi, Chrissy. Were you a difficult teenager? I'd like to say that I wasn't. Really? Yeah. I don't think I was that bad. I felt, you know, I was a goody two-shoes, you know, mm. straight A's and what have you. Ooh. But I didn't get, you know, the extra attention. So then I started to misbehave so that I can get the extra attention. Mm. So you think it's mainly sometimes due to teenagers not getting enough attention, that's why yeah. they play up? Yeah, well that's what I did. I had to play up to have my parents' um, attention and I did, I got it, so then it kind of helped me calm down. Okay, we're not advocating but that But don't at all. do that. <laughs> <laughs> don't well, I, that. I was difficult, I think around age 17, but that was because I was going through some major problems in my life. Mm. And I acted up because of that. So I think there's very various, various there's reasons why teenagers yeah. do. But we're going to be hearing from our experts a bit later on. But before we get the news from you, Rihanna, we're also going to have a fitness tip from Jane, who's going to show us some, give us some advice on exercises that people can do who have back problems. So let's take a look at this. Hi, I'm Jane. Welcome to our top fitness tips for the day. So today I'm going to show you how to ease back pain Loads of people suffer with back pain. People are young, old, male, female, and I've got three really great exercises that can help. And they're perfectly safe, so you'll be fine to do them. The first one is a simple knee roll. So can you see I'm lying on my back, I'm gonna rest my head and relax it on the floor. Draw down through the abdominals, so you just pull your belly button in a little bit. Have your feet nice and light on the floor and then just roll the knees and the pelvis side to side and keep your shoulder blades on the floor. And it really helps. It really stretches out the back and eases out any tightness. I highly recommend this. This one's really good if you've been in a car journey or you've been spending the day shopping, spending all your money, you can come home with a backache. So this is really good. Another couple of exercises that you can do is um, an exercise called the shoulder bridge, which is actually a Pilates exercise, and it really gets your back moving as well. So you bend your knees, tilt the pelvis, and then lift up your vertebra one at a time until you're resting on your feet and your shoulders. Try not to arch the back. Try and keep your back nice and flat and straight. And then as you exhale, roll down through your spine and try and get each vertebra to touch the floor separately. So if I'll just run through that one more time for you, lift up from the base of the spine, take a nice deep breath and then roll back down. So the idea is that you don't just come up and down, you try and create a wave through the spine. And I'll quickly show you an exercise that will actually strengthen your lower back. This one's really good for the back. So you place your elbows on the floor and all you do is flex the chest up nice and gentle. So you feel some work happening here in the lower back. Not putting any pressure on it, it's just a gentle lift and a lower. And this stretches out the back, but also actually does strengthen the muscles in the back. So try those whenever you have backache and hopefully it will alleviate it. So I'll see you for our top tips next time. Thank you to the lovely Jane. So, Rihanna, what news do you have for us today? I have lovely news Hello. for the ladies. I think the ladies are going to love this. Well, Burger King have outdone themselves because they've made diet chips. They're called um, Satis Fries. <laughs> <laughs> and it has 30% less the fat. Why the ladies? Because ladies are very, very picky. I think so everyone men. agree. But men, you know, they couldn't care less, really. They'll <laughs> get a bag of crisps and 
<laughs> what have you. But ladies, how many calories? Mm, I don't think so on this occasion. You know, very, very fussy. Yeah. So to have a fast food chain that's made fries that's 30% fat free, less or what have you. I mean, I don't know if it's going to make but much how, of a how's difference. How is that a diet chip? Because they're still fry. Yes, they do, but it's 30% less. And for those who look at the calories and they count it, it makes a very big difference, Chrissy. I mean, they shouldn't me. be Burger King in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you can't help it. I mean, there are others, I won't say names. I've been trying to lose weight for some time now. Oh, you went for a run. Was it yesterday? It was yesterday. Well I went done. for a run and I'm in so much pain oh. right now. It doesn't show sitting down. That you very didn't painful. pop into Burger King on your way no, back. No, 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 no. I just couldn't do that to myself. I couldn't. That, that reminds me of I went, I went running once with a friend of mine and I turned around and she disappeared and I was looking for her and then I saw her running and she'd gone into the shop bought an ice cream and was eating it while she was running I couldn't believe it oh my yeah I didn't did I she didn't. not get stitches because I mean I did no. I played a game yesterday as well was it bulldog and I was running up and down I didn't stretch I didn't do anything properly and I just started running so now I mean for me to get up this morning so much pain never so, mind so at least you're pain. on the road to but yes I'm your on goal. the road to my goal so um I won't be trying these <laughs> chips unfortunately but you know, I could save myself. That sounds horrible, by the way. But oh, I shouldn't say that. Okay, anyway. Probably be nice. Moving swiftly on. <laughs> Moving swiftly on. Now, you know how um, in sports, when women do weightlifting, you expect them to have a, a certain physique to probably look muscular and really... Mm -hmm. uh, well, we have a, um, a beautiful young lady who says it's fine. You know, you can be beautiful, but also be brawn. Not too sure exactly what that means, but I think it's you can lift muscles and still look pretty. You know, have those heavy weights and still look really, really pretty. Because she was um, Do Miss. Have a picture of her. She was former Miss Leeds, and mm -hmm. now she's going um, for the Commonwealth Games after lifting 190 well, she kg. Look and big. Yeah. Because we always have that perception for you to lift weights and do all these things. Well, I, you used, have to, to be I used to lift pretty heavy weights, and I got really skinny. Really, really slim How when I was that doing that. So, why is it that when we look on TV and they have all these competitions, th they look I think really. They, they on a certain regime to get that way, but you, yeah. Is it hard? Is it difficult? Do you have to eat lots of, what's it, carbs and... I just ate what I wanted, to be <laughs> honest. I just got really slim. But it's I'm, really... The, the it's more weights I was lifting, the slimmer I got. It was really So weird. for females, the more weights they lift, sometimes they I get don't know, slimmer. I don't know, I'm saying for myself, I don't know for everyone, but that's but what for men, they get really, really bulky. Yeah, there's other factors included in so that. So you can still have someone that looks, you know, pretty yeah. chic, pretty, yeah, lifting yeah. those heavy weights mm -hmm. and making it look easy and pretty and yeah. everything. I, d I don't know if I could do it. I know you've done it, but yeah. I, I don't think I could lift much. I mean, 190 kg, what's that? Like a big bag of rice? No. <laughs> I think it's, I think it's it? more than that. Is it? Oh. <laughs> okay. I know, I'm not really good with all this heavy weight lifting stuff, but swiftly moving on. Mm. I was reading something about student loans. Now, students and courses have brought them into so much debt and some people are saying now that the amount they have to pay for their course is not really it doesn't match up to um, the value of the degree because the first year doesn't count for anything so you're probably having an easy year paying a lot of money but then it doesn't go towards your final grade mm -hmm. so now students are arguing because the government have decided that they want to um, shift the loans to like debt collecting companies oh to try and get the students to pay up quicker oh and no, it's pretty hard terrible. it's really really hard because now it's pressure enough as it is isn't it? a lot of pressure and or paying back that could amount to um you know if you saved up everything that you have to pay back you could put a deposit on a flat so now yeah. it's a question of do i go and get a degree and get into debt or do i just save up and buy myself a flat see i think that's a <laughs> I can't say it's a two-way so that, that's another. It's very uh, tricky. That's a topic on its own. <laughs> yeah, I think it is. And I think that's another reason why some teenagers are strong. Like sort of, the older teenagers are a bit stressed Stress. as well. because Very of stressed. Because you debts. want, you the need the qualification. They haven't even <laughs> work, started working yet. They haven't started working. They don't really yeah. have much of a life. But then sometimes for you to get a job, you need to have a degree. Mm. They look at that as a, just for you to apply, they'd say you need to have this yeah. qualification, you need to have a degree. They don't probably don't look at exactly what the degree is in. That's something else our experts can address later if we have time, right? Yeah, just having the degree is good enough. So, you know, think about it. A degree is worth it. And maybe mm -hmm. you'll have to work a bit extra to pay it off, but you will have that degree that can open many doors and you will get mm -hmm. a good job because of what you achieved. So don't okay. brush it off so quickly. Mm -hmm. And that's all the news I have. That's all the news? Today. Yeah. Are you sure? 
I thought you had some more for us. Well, it's a bit of a funny one. Oh, go on, tell me. Tell me one. One more. We've got time. It's about um, etiquette when okay. you're using your phone mm. and um, certain things that you should do and shouldn't do when you're using your phone, like using your phone on the toilet when you're talking to by? someone. It was a, a research that was done a couple of weeks ago. It says, don't text on the toilet and get rid of comedy ringtones because they put people off. Mm. Now, you're on your way to a very important interview and then your phone goes off and it's probably like the A-team or something <laughs> goofy like that. I, I would be laughing along the way. And also, in them, when you're writing text messages, people tend to put a lot of X's, too much kisses and mm. the um, abbreviations of LOL, all these smiley faces in the wrong place. Kind of throw somebody off. Imagine, yeah, I'll be there in five minutes. X, 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 X. Mm. I mean, far too many X's. Make it short, keep it brief. Because the way you text, you tend to speak like that afterwards. So if I keep... No, you don't. Yes, you do. No, you don't. I tell you, you do. A lot of youths do that, especially, because if they keep writing LOL, so they'll be talking and they'll say something, but they won't be like, oh, it's really funny. And they'll be like, LOL. That is so... Oh, well, that is irritating. It is. Rihanna, yeah, thank you, know, you so much. Find that. I'm sure <laughs> you'll think, be LOLing we're gonna, soon. Yeah, <laughs> I think we're going to have to do a, a whole segment on phone etiquette, right? Yeah. OK, but okay. let's go to a break now, because afterwards we're going to be joined by Dave Lee and Gordon Jessamine from the Infinity Foundation and they're going to give us some tips on how parents and teachers and people in general can deal the best way with teenagers that they can. Join us after this. Don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show. Always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back, and now I'm joined by Dave Lee and Gordon Jessamine from the Infinity Foundation. Hello, gentlemen. Hi, hello. How are you both? Good. It's Very great well. to have you both here. Now, first of all, who's going to tell us about the Infinity Foundation, what it is yeah, I'll, and I'll how start. it started? Um, really, four of us, Dave, myself and two others, <clears throat> we really felt that through our own personal journeys that um, we could bring in some new approaches to help young people, to help teenagers. From my own experience as a parent, where I found that... Um, I didn't have the tools or resources to help, certainly my, my youngest, my son. Mm -hmm. And um, through that, we've, we, we got together about 18 months ago and said we'll set up a foundation mm -hmm. and start to bring in some new approaches and programs. So something very close to both of your, yeah. your hearts. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Could you tell us a little bit about your backgrounds and like why, you know, what the kind of difficulties you had and how you dealt with that, Dave? Uh, okay, um, as a father of two, I've got a teenage daughter and a, a teenage son. Um, I started to become frustrated with my use of briberies and threats in trying to get okay. them to cooperate with me. And was it I was always like that from childhood or were, they, were, you, were you okay um, dealing with them as children? I was okay as dealing with them as children but as they started coming into teenage years mm. the, the, the threats of not getting ice creams and not going down swimming or not going to the pictures isn't, wasn't working yeah. so I become frustrated with that. Um, so in, we went out and looked through the foundation how we could uh, come from a different approach with that and we've discovered yeah. some tools that have made our life made my life a lot easier <laughs> in dealing with my teenagers okay and how about yourself Ethan? yeah i mean my my sort of for me my my eight-year-old son basically walked out of a primary school and then we found at, age eight. at the age yeah. of eight yeah and then we found another school and he walked out of that school too yeah. so <laughs> we felt pretty you know, my, my, my wife and I both felt inadequate. We thought, you know, what has happened? Why can't we serve? Why can't we help him? Mm -hmm. And um, we'd already had, we've already got two lovely teenage girls at the time when he was around eight. Mm -hmm. So through a lot of our own personal search within ourselves, we started to find that there were more tools within inside of ourselves. Wow. By discovering that, that's when the foundation sort of Okay. became something that we could... Now, can you in. tell us a few of these, these tools? I know obviously it's too much to cover in one yeah. show, but what, what are some of the key things maybe that you've taught people that you've helped parents, teachers with that is really useful? Rather than um, define, to set their boundaries, you know, as, as we hear, you know, if we've got, you've got to set their boundaries, you've got to set their boundaries. I haven't got to set their boundaries, I define mine. And how I define mine is by expressing what I would like or I need or I would like help with rather than telling them what they should do. Mm -hmm. So there's a real definition of who I am, not what they should do. Because mm -hmm. in, instead of trying to control and manipulate through bribery and praise, 
I'm just being authentic and who I am and saying, I would like the hand washing up or I'd like this or I would like, really, you know, so I dialogue from a place of what I want rather than what they should do. Right. Does that work then? Yeah. <laughs> really? Mm. Yeah, it it's simple. It's genius. It's incredible. Wow. Is that because they feel. Yeah. So I think the missing part for me was, you know, I was coming from a lot of program of belief that I must act like this as a father. Mm. So I'm not being authentic mm. because I've got some idea as to how to be a father. I, you know, yeah. I can remember when my, my girls were very young, walking in, seeing my wife's face saying, basically, the girls are messing up, they're naughty, you've mm -hmm. got to go and deal with it. Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking, what do I do here? So I did the normal stumping up the stairs, where are you? you know? <laughs> but actually, it, well, I wasn't being authentic. Yeah. Years but later, when my son came into my world, he really wasn't going to stand for someone that was not going to be authentic. So what he was showing me you is, you I, wasn't, I wasn't <laughs> being, yeah. exactly. So yeah. your children would teach you everything. Mm -hmm. And he was becoming the teacher. But was I prepared yeah. to be the student? I think that's the question you have to look at. That's quite a different way of thinking about things, isn't it? It's, 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 some parents find that quite challenging. Well, it's based it, was on challenging from, it was challenging for myself and my wife. Mm. Yeah. Extremely challenging. And I think all of us have had our own experiences in that. But I think once you start to find that place inside yourself, you start to dialogue from a more authentic place. Mm -hmm. And then you start to see the other, rather than me coming from he's an eight year old or a 10 year old, I mean, he's now 16, you know, and at 15, basically he, we were called into his school, he's not kind of behaving well enough or whatever. And it was the GCSE year. Mm -hmm. And what he said to us is, what do I do? What, what can I do? And I said, well, the only thing you've got to start learning is personal responsibility. You've got to know who you are mm -hmm. and you're responsible for your own feelings. You can't keep projecting on the teachers because you're saying this one's not good enough. And that there's many people in the world who are doing jobs they don't particularly want to do. Mm. And you may yeah. see the, the, the authentic teachers who we've all met, lovely teachers who love their job. And some people who are in their job maybe don't want to be there. I don't know. But it wasn't his role to sort of misbehave in some classes mm -hmm. but behave in others. And I said to him at the end of the day, the only thing we can do is take you on one of our courses that we've discovered and you'll go to a course for six days, and it's a residential course, and you'll learn about who you are, who you really mm -hmm. are. From that, transformation. So afterwards... Can you tell us another little something else that you teach yeah. there then? That um, well, I think equal dignity. Yeah. If I start to look at you with equal dignity, mm -hmm. straight away, I don't have any idea of what that is. I haven't come with a preconceived idea how we're going to communicate, but mm -hmm. we're just going to communicate. So if I'm looking at my teenage son, with equal dignity. I'm not coming from a belief system which says he is the teenager, I am the adult, I'm the parent, I will control this situation. I will be able to express my what I feel and mm -hmm. he can express what he feels and we can come to okay. a compromise. It doesn't stop yeah. dialoguing. You've got a dialogue and he wants certain things his way and it still might kick up. But if you come from your own authentic self, mm -hmm. then he will mirror that back. But and if you also, can't control your, your meat control. So yeah, and it's also it's not trying to get the, the child to cooperate. It's allowing the child to be who they are, or the teenager to be who they are, and you deal with that by talking from integrity, self-esteem, and personal responsibility. Mm -hmm. And if you dialogue from them core values, they dialogue back with you. And it's so there's it's it's not so much of a power struggle, mm -hmm. you know, because it, what I discovered with my teenagers very early on was I was going to get into a power struggle. And I didn't want to be, be right, and I didn't want to be happy. I wanted to relate, you know, so we, we, it's, it's how we relate. Whereas yeah. some parents would just say, look, it's my way, yeah. that's, yeah, it, that's no it, no yeah. explanation. Yeah. Who I, you know, I'm your dad, you're going to do what I tell yeah. you. And then so, sometimes they don't understand. But it's, so it's then. based on who I am, not what I am. So in defining who I am, not what I am, not because I'm your parent, you should know better. And that control, you know, schoolman just saying there, that control, because control, you will meet resistance, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so Shadi, because I remember sort of growing up, because my dad was was quite strict. You should be doing this. You should be yeah, doing that. When I wanted to go out, for example, and he'd say no, he didn't explain why yeah. he didn't want us to go to certain places, but it was just like because I said so. Yeah. And I found that quite difficult to deal with. That later on, I understood why. You know, he was worried. He didn't, you know, want us to get into trouble, all sorts mm. of things. But at the time, I didn't, I didn't understand. So it was because it's his hard. fears and his worries. Exactly. You know, if he'd it, said, "I'm afraid," for example, yeah, of course. that oh, I'm afraid. So there you go. Yeah. There's an ownership of who he is, rather mm. than and you shouldn't do that, it's I'm afraid. Yeah, so that's yeah. I know it, that's a definition of who he is yeah, rather than what you it, should do. It does make sense. Yeah. So what do you actually do with parents? Is it courses that you do? Yeah, or? yeah, yeah. Art of saying no with a clear conscience is one of them, mm -hmm. um, which is about personal boundaries and defining boundaries based yeah. on self-esteem and integrity. So, uh, so parents are actually just starting to discover who they are. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. It's incredible. The biggest insights that we have when we do the workshops is parents are sitting there going, I don't know who I am. Uh, but that's fantastic because in the child... So it's as much as helping the parents than it is Absolutely. The Absolutely. Always. And that's what yeah. the foundation's about. Yeah. It's about empowering the teenager and the parents. And, you know, the schools that we've been running the programme in with Gordon, it's empowering the, the, the teachers as well as the students, mm -hmm. which is incredible. Because it's just relationship. It's all it is. It's relationship values and how we relate. Is there like a particular case or person that you remember that really stood out for you because of the, the change in the relationship? <sighs> we must have had quite I a think few. Yeah, yeah, I think one example was a, we, we're, we're doing a pilot scheme in some nurseries in a, mm -hmm. in a school and one of the teachers said, um, using this dialogue is helping me at home with my troubled teenager. You know, right. That's a gift then to realise that I can change my dialogue and suddenly I can communicate with my teenager mm -hmm. just by a few simple words, but it comes from a more authentic place. So the teenager suddenly goes, oh, I can feel what's, something's different here. I'm not feeling controlled and like you were saying, mm -hmm. there wasn't any explanation before and if you're feeling suppressed and controlled by the other, you'll either shut down or you'll rebel, you'll explode mm -hmm. at the other. Which I did after the first time. So, yeah, I, yeah, I started rebelling when I got to about 18 actually, because mm. it took a while. But um, yeah, I just started going out anyway and doing what I wanted and then the relationship was very strained after that. And it's also so to trust your teenager. Trust mm. and worry is not love. You mm. know, if you're worried about something, speak to your friend. Don't, don't put them worries onto the teenager. Yeah. Because they're saying, well, you don't trust me. So you've got to have that level of trust, mm -hmm. and which I do, you know, and I die a lot. You know, I am worried. I am a parent. But I don't put the worry on my teenagers. I speak yeah. to my wife or my friends and say, look, I'm worried about this. And then I have to find a way that I can dialogue that in a way that I am worried that you're going out. But that's my yeah. worry. Yeah. And here's my phone number and if you need, you know, so rather mm. than saying you shouldn't go out, you're going to get in trouble, it's like, I'm just concerned. And it's just yeah, to say that I'm concerned nice. and that's it. Because I'm glad, and we're looking back, I'm glad my dad was like that with us because we did sort of, he did save us from quite a few things, but mm. like, I would have liked at the time to have known, but it's yeah. like parents, maybe they don't know, yeah. they're not educated in this way, so yeah. I'm sure they're trying their best, right? Yeah. <laughs> but it's Absolutely. great to have, it's yeah, great to no have advice. Yeah. And there, is, there is no judgment no. To, oh. yeah. to any parent whatsoever. It's just yeah. looking... We it's a hard job, isn't it? It's yeah. really it's the it's toughest difficult, job. yeah. 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 And there's no degrees, yeah. as you was talking about earlier. There's no degrees in it. All right. <laughs> yeah. We're going to go to a quick break, gentlemen, but okay. we're going to, you're going to stay with us because we're also going to be joined uh, by another guest, um, that social worker, Donald Gale, who's also a counsellor. And he's going to be actually giving his advice as well. He's actually worked with youth offenders for over 10 years, so he's going to have lots of things to tell us. So do join us after this. Don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show, always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. Okay, so now we're joined by Donald Gell and also Maria Jose. How do you say the surname? Um, hiya, Ditali. Hiya, okay. <laughs> it's a bit of a mouthful, but anyway, you get the picture. Maria and Donald. <laughs> okay, so Donald, you're a social work and counsellor. Yeah, and an LP practitioner as well. Right, okay. Yeah. And Maria, you are a singer-songwriter and you're only 13 years old. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. And she's on, on TV. I think she's so brave. But let's start off with, with Donald first of yeah. all. So tell us a bit about the work that you do in helping youngsters. Uh, I've worked for a probation service for around 15 years. Mm -hmm. I work in, with young offenders from the age of 13 to 17 year old in right. prisons. We develop programmes looking at education, mm -hmm getting them back into the real world and actually helping them to adjust uh, often in prison because it's a very terrifying place in prison. Oh gosh, yeah. You know, uh, we go in a place where there's no parents, mm. there's no one to look after them. And if you're only 14 going into a prison, it can be very, very frightening. Yeah. Uh, so for me, it's about educating the young people to become realistic about real life once mm -hmm. they leave prison. What do you think are the main issues why they end up there in the first place? Because I mean, sometimes I think parents do get judged because there are parents that really genuinely do their best for their kids, but mm. they still, the teenagers sometimes still go off the rails or... But what, what do you think the main issue is? The main issue for me is peer pressure. Uh, a lot of the young people want a care today or they want money today. They don't know how to wait. So what they want to do is develop skills in getting money quick or becoming involved in crime yeah. or sometimes just about being popular 
because often the bad boys are the popular guys. Yeah, but what can parents do then? Like, if, if kids are sort of being pressured at school and stuff, what, what do you think the best thing that parents can do? I think um, we, I was saying before, we do not realise we've got a lot of young parents. So somebody who's 26 could have a nine-year-old, a 26-year-old. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the young people don't often, the young parents don't have the education around parenting skills. Mm -hmm. So they don't know how to teach young people those skills. So a young person may be looking at other people to get those skills from, and that often is the gang member or the yeah. bad boy or somebody who can get you in trouble. Mm -hmm. And the lifestyle that they leave is often very attractable to a young person. Right. So if the parents are not there for them, then they look elsewhere. Mm -hmm. It's not easy, is it? No. Then. And Maria, you're, you're just 13, and obviously you've, I can see you've got a close relationship with your parents. They're here supporting you this evening. How important is that for you, like, to have their support and for them to, to be there for you? I think it's very important for your parents to have support and, like, help you get what you feel that you want to, mm -hmm. like, achieve and help you get a good like a good education and things yeah. like that obviously because then you can go on and do and believe in yourself that believe that you can do that and if they're not there to like cheer you on and help you get to that then it's kind of hard because yeah. you often doubt yourself and if your parents aren't there to believe in you then you often wonder like who is going to be there Mm, that, so, that makes sense. Yeah. So have you always known since you're quite a young age that you wanted to sing and write songs? Um, well, I started like singing when I was about 10, mm -hmm. when I moved here. Wait, um, wait till you hear her voice, guys, at home. She's fantastic. <laughs> Love it. Um, yeah. yeah, and I just, I, I thought that I, I, I've thought for a while that I really want to be a singer. And then mm -hmm. I started getting into writing. And then I started thinking that maybe I just want to be a writer. And then knowing that I can involve t both of them together, it was like, great. Yeah. And now I can do the two things that I love together. Okay. So, yeah. So we're going to be hearing, you're going to be singing for us later on, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, it's great. I mean, in the case of Mirrors, yeah. she has supportive parents, but the ones that don't... But not, it does, it's not always the case. Uh, mm -hmm. I can give you a good example. Um, I know a family now, 2.2, both working. One's a successful businessman. Yeah. Unfortunately, last week I went to his son's funeral. Oh, his son went into prison as a young offender and uh, he progressed into the adult world. And the minute he had up jail, he couldn't handle it and he actually took his own life. Oh, so this is the reality of yeah. a prison. Yeah. You know, if, if the young people are not prepared for prison as a, a young offender, once they go into adult prison, it's a different kettle of fish. But those parents were very good, supportive, mm. had their own business, looked after him, educated him, did everything right for him. But unfortunately, the drugs took the side that of him. Yeah. And so obviously the key is to avoid them going yeah, to you know, prison yeah. in, in yeah. the first place. Reality is things do happen yeah, in prison. They do, gosh. And what about what about peer pressure? What do, what advice could you gentlemen give about, you know, parents that are having to deal with teenagers that are getting so much pressure from school and from college that they just, they just don't know what to do? Because they're there for them, but then there's also these gang members or these fr so-called friends that are really putting the pressure on as well. You've got if you've got healthy personal boundaries, which are based on self-esteem, then you're able to say no. Yeah. But if you've got weak personal boundaries, then you want to be part of the gang. So if your self-esteem is low, then you can't say no. So it's about defining your personal boundaries and being able to say no without fear of losing your friends, without fear of losing your street cred. Because it's quite a difficult word to say no. You know, and that's, that's the peer pressure, you know, to yeah. actually say no. But I, th and I think often, though, it's... It's not about saying no, you know, I've, I've known the strong, strong young people mm. who have no choice but to go into to, to drugs and gangs because if they don't, the consequences of they will get hurt, the parents will get hurt, they get threatened, and sometimes they don't have a choice of the environment where they really, live. But isn't there someone they can go to, though, instead of getting into that? Well, you know, some, who do they go to? They can't go to the parents, they can't go to the friends. The only people they can go to are the gang members or the people who are putting pressure on them. And I agree with you, you have to be very strong as a young person. Yeah, you've got yeah. to be ultimately strong to say no. In, in prison, you've got to be able to say no. In school, you've got to say no. You've got to say no to a lot of people to get be strong. Mm -hmm. And often people are not that strong. Maybe their trading codes could make those people be stronger. But it's a, it's a lot of ask for a young person. We're talking about 12, 13, 14, 15 year olds. Oh. Yeah. The, 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 the babies. Is age, like yeah, the babies, they don't know anything. Yeah. And yeah. they've got a lot of pressure. 
And at that age, at 13, I, wouldn't, I couldn't hang with that pressure. Mm. You know, it's not, it's a, it's a lot to ask young people to do. And ask him for do help. You appreciate your, you, you really appreciate everything you have. And yeah. I'm sure that your parents appreciate you as well. God. Yeah. Sorry. You and ask him for help, as you know, uh, uh, the work that we've done with teenagers is realising they struggle to ask for help. Mm. Because it's that like, I know everything, you know, mm. and it's it's in actually saying that I have to show my vulnerability to them and say that I actually don't know everything. Well, they don't um, know, do they? They I mean, know. But if, if, if your yeah. parents didn't teach you something, how yeah. do you know? Yeah. yeah. Unless your parents are there for you as a role model yeah. and teaching you those core skills, you, if you go into the street, you don't know what's going on. No, absolutely. Mm -hmm. But I don't think many parents we we know that, you know, from from for me when I was looking at that in myself. I didn't have the tools, I didn't have the, the, the approach or awareness to, to how to deal with my son. Mm. And I, my one thought was that when he was young, how am I going to manage when he gets older? Because the strength of this mm. young boy, I can just about deal with. Yeah. So I had to go and look within myself to find out where the lack of communication was, where the disconnection was from me as a father. Mm -hmm. And that takes, and I, and I think for, for us all as parents, we don't, you don't go to school and learn about parenting. You learn parenting from your parents mm -hmm. and you yeah, bring yeah. in your, your new life skills but to as, that. As you, know, as you know, in prison, there's a thing called uh, undisclosed love, you know, unconditional love in prisons. And that is, they find love in prison, they find, they find the parents in prison, they mm -hmm. find the friends in prison, they yes. find the, the, the role model in prison. And if that prison is not a good prison, you know, you're going down a very, very dark road as a young person. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, what, what, what needs to be done is courses like yourselves should be going in there and teaching these young people these core skills. Because one of the things that frustrates me in prison, we do all the work and then they get released on a Friday and there's no parents meeting them at the gate. It's not the mum and dads. It's not the uncles. It's not the brothers and sisters. It it's the gang members or it's the, it's the people that they was working with before mm. as friends, so-called, picking them up to go and do a job. Gosh, so we really spent six so months, awful. 12 months working with them. Yeah. And then once they release on that gate. Yeah. All right, so let's get, I want a bit of advice from each one of you now. You, you include Maria, <laughs> if you want to. Okay, what, what, because we've just got a couple of minutes to the break. Okay. What would be your maybe one piece of advice for a youngster that's tempted to get into the wrong lifestyle? The thing, the thing for me, the one advice I would give somebody is seek help. Mm. Wherever that help comes from, it doesn't matter. It could be from the church, it could be from the man next door, but yeah. go and talk to somebody yeah. before you do anything. Okay. Mm. And Maria, like facing, I'm sure you must also face some kind of peer pressure at school and stuff. What, how would you, if there was a young lady now watching the show and she was saying, look, I'm really like, I really feel like I'm in trouble, or there's these people pressurising me or bullying me, what, what advice would you give to her, do you think? I think maybe seek that like self reassurance and mm. obviously try to find someone that you can talk to yeah. and if you don't have that then maybe like read in magazines or like online or something like that that's that's a good point actually because if you don't have physically some if you think there's no one that you can actually talk to or maybe you're not ready to speak to there's lots of like charities and help that yeah. you can get online and that's a very good point Maria. thank you and gentlemen what would you say in my experience as a troubled teenager that went through the system that he's speaking about um i wish i'd trusted my gut feeling because mm -hmm. when i felt bad inside if i'd have just listened to that not overrun it would overrode it with drink and drugs I wouldn't have got myself in as much trouble as I got myself into because that intuition and inner guidance is mm -hmm. there for a reason. But mm -hmm. I overrode it and I got myself in a lot of trouble. Okay. I went through the system that this man's talking about. Right, okay. But that's another story. Okay, yeah, it is, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned that before we yeah, talked no. about it. Never mind, never mind. <laughs> okay, and for, oh, we've just got to go to a quick break now. We've got something to say in 10 seconds. <laughs> yeah, I just think find someone that you can trust, yeah. that you can communicate with. Definitely. And there, there, there will be someone in your world or fun. A helpline, there was plenty of helplines and definitely. charities. Yeah, definitely, because you're not alone. There are people around yeah. that can help, yeah. aren't there? So thank you so much, everybody, especially the mm -hmm. gentleman. Marie, you're going to join us after the break because you're going to be performing for us. <laughs> so you're going to stay, don't disappear. And thank you so much. And if you want more information about any of our guests this evening, you can visit the website, chrissybshow.tv. See you after this break. Don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show, always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. Welcome 
back to the show and now we have the self-development clinic with Chris Brown. Hello, Chris. Hi, Chris. This is a very calm all of a sudden in the studio, have you noticed? There's a laugh in the ear, there's a laugh. You should have seen it during the break. But anyway. Do you know, that was really interesting, actually. As always, no say, but it was very interesting. I was listening to points of views over there and I thought, hmm, the whole idea of parenting, because you do think about the child only, mm. you think about from the child's perspective as well, but... Uh, oh, uh, sorry, yeah. sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, this is wrong. Do you have your mic on? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Do you need your mum and dad? No, please, yes. I need my mum and dad, exactly. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Hello? Gosh. Oh, well. It's mic me up time. <laughs> they forget your microphone this morning. No. <laughs> it's ill. It's Ill. We're a bit short staffed yeah, here, you see. Aren't we, Sheila? Mm. We'll get to with another pair of hands. Bless you. Right. She's amazing. You get a workout here, don't you? <laughs> She's always busy, isn't it? Busy, I up know. and go. On the go. Two people, Rita. We're going to get someone cool. else here. Okay. Let's hope this doesn't buzz away. Don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show. Always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back to the show and we're now in the self-development clinic with Chris Brown. Hello Chris. Hi Chris. How are you? I'm really good, thanks. Not too bad at all. Hey Sylph. What did you think of Oh very well, thank you. Good. What did you think of our guests before? Brilliant. Yeah. Excellent. Um, the whole idea of parenting as well, um, something to think about because we're talking about the children and that's what affects everything from day one yeah. as they grow, which I will be talking about later on about growth. Mm -hmm. But the whole idea of how we actually respond and I think it fits into different places and different cultures and different identity as well. Because on some level, yes, you can actually say, well, how I feel at the mm -hmm. same time. But in some, um, they say cultures, well, it's a matter of like, do as I say. Yeah, and you think, yeah, does it work in different mm -hmm. places? I think it's brilliant, though. It's better understanding, better communication mm -hmm. at the end of the day. Definitely. You know, and think I could have done with that. And I look forward to the performance by Maria later as well. Oh, oh, can't wait. Okay, cool. Can't wait. Heard her <laughs> points of views on there for I know, oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, can't wait to hear at the end of the day. But you know, talking about uh, young people earlier on as well, but young people as well, we're talking about mature people. The idea of growth, the will to grow at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Now, young people, we're talking about being nurtured, but overall, even the adult as well, still needs to be nurtured and needs to grow. Mm -hmm. You know, they say there's two particular days in your life which are the greatest days. And one of them is when you're born. And the second one is when you discover your purpose. I thought you were going to say when you die, sorry. <laughs> Do you know, up. funny enough, I said oh, it before. Yeah. How, is, how is that? Okay, anyway. <laughs> no, it's about discovering your purpose as well. When you discover your purpose, it actually puts you on track to say, well, look, this is what I'm going to be and this is what I'm going to do. Yeah. Um, looking at that as well. It's about knowing who you are, as the gentleman was it's saying. Knowing well, yeah. it's, it's, it's knowing who you are. It's knowing you are. And not all of us do. Not all of us do. We go in different directions mm -hmm. and we follow different places. We follow different role models. We saw somebody even making money and say, we want to do that too. But then find out later on along the way, this is not really what I want to do. This is mm -hmm. not what I'm happy with. You know, I've said it many times. One of the biggest blessings is getting up on a Monday morning and getting paid for something you enjoy doing, yeah, right? Yeah, I mean, that's brilliant at the end of the day. Now, in saying that, there are ways of actually tracking that and making sure that you do hit that target. And I'm gonna go through it. I'm gonna go for a little acronym. Actually, if those at home as well, I'd say, take this down, write it down, get it on your pad, you know, get it going, follow this acronym. Anyway, we're talking about the idea of grow, right? Mm -hmm. So grow, you've got to work out what do you really want. A lot of people go in different directions as I explained. Now with this acronym grow, we're talking about the letter G, right? Mm -hmm. Now G actually stands for your goals, right? So you find out what your goal is. You've got to define what it is about you that puts you on track for that goal. And when I say that, find out your true potential. What's your desire? What's your passion at mm -hmm. the end of the day? The 
you know, to get up on a, let's say, Monday morning, as I said, well, let's forget about that. What about the idea of getting up without an alarm clock because you've got the passion, the desire to do what you want to do? I mean, yeah. that's great at the end of the day. Or even, to, even if you just look at what you do in your spare time, that's a good indicator because that's your free time. No one's, you know, no one's telling you to do that. So that's something that you want to do yourself. So Yep. Mm -hmm. Turn your hobbies into your business. Yeah. That's a great one, you know, because if it is... As you said, it's your passion, it's something you like to do in spare time. Mm -hmm. That's a great one. So find out what that is first. Yeah. Now let's talk about the letter R. R, right? R, we're talking about reality, the realistic side of it. And the realistic side of it, the reality of it is, what is my situation now? What have I got? What tools have I got? What can I use? What is my circumstance now? Who have I got mm -hmm. around me? What support have I got? Can I actually go ahead with this at the end of right. the day? So that R is to recognize the reality of this situation that you're in now, right. your circumstance. Okay. Now, we're talking about O here, options. Options. You know, a tree grows and you say to a tree, well, how tall can you grow? Don't worry about it. The yeah. tree's just going to keep growing regardless what until it can stop, right? But a tree has many branches and it starts growing one way and it branches off that way. That branch grows off another way. You'll find that when you start writing down the options that you got and you really explore them, mm -hmm. you'll find you've got a lot more than what your limited mind would say. Your limited mind, the self-limits puts limits there saying, I can't do this because of that. I can't do this because of that. Oh, you won't be able to do this. That's not true. That is a lie. Mm -hmm. That is a lie, which we tend to do to ourselves all the time. So we've got to break that barrier first. Look for those options. What other options have I got? Talk to other people as well. Find out what's going on. Interact with others. There's always another way through, right? Mm -hmm. Now, the last one, we're talking about W. And with this W, we're talking about when. When? Now. When? When. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Because a lot of people say, well, I'll do it tomorrow. And I'll say this now. You just said now. I challenge people to actually do this right now. Work this out. You know, grow. Because you'll probably put it down and wait till tomorrow, day after, do it mm -hmm. the day after. And that enthusiasm goes a bit. And you it start does, thinking about, yeah, yeah at the end of the day. Stuff, but right? you've got to get moving at the end of the day. Get that momentum going, you know, and realize you've got to grow too. Now, growth is not just about, um, we're talking about a business, just you as a character as well, mm -hmm. your personality, um, the areas that you need to develop. We've all got, I never say weaknesses, really, areas that we need to develop yeah. at the end of the day. Strengths, areas we need to develop. Work on them, work on them. Be honest with yourself, be sincere. Begin mm -hmm. to grow. Thank you so much, Chris. Yeah. That was wonderful. Pleasure. Now we're going to go to a quick video by a youth group called the Victory Youth Group. And they actually get used to think about their future and what they're doing with their lives. And then after that, straight after that, we're going to have our performance by the lovely Maria. Thank you so much, Chris. Thank, Thank you, you guys for watching. And we'll see you again next time on the Chrissy V Show. Bye-bye for now. <laughs>
Yo, we gotta change, man. We gotta do this Yo, right. From now on, we gotta do things different. Yo, we gotta make history. Right, this is this is really creepy. Can we get out of here, please? Can we go? Come, come, come. Take us off. Let's go. a few of the things that we'll be doing Luke no you're gonna be gentle with us um we'll try we'll make it a challenge put it that way okay so how long are we going to be doing this for do you think uh probably about 30 to 40 minutes okay go oh my goodness <laughs> <laughs> it's quite easy with these bands <laughs> you'll be flying up there just watch your chin as you go up. Just put a pocket through. Right there. I'm gonna go flying. Step up. That's okay. Okay, so once you put your hands. I'm gonna go my feet. I'm gonna go. Sorry, it's okay. But keep your legs under your your, your hips, okay? Because I'll go. Keep keep your legs nice and straight. I can't. Okay, reach up. Keep your legs under. <laughs> Maybe just do that. Uh, one on the one. You're saying the other. <laughs> <laughs> okay, push, push your foot down. My 